Hello there, I've just had a very important insight. I'm just in the middle of some Qigong breathing. Although I call it Qigong, it's actually astral body methods developed in China. Because methods of the astral body are universal. They are methods of the astral body, that's why they deal with the meridians, which is the blood vessels, if you like, that transport material in the astral body. And there are various um, large centers, and they are the organs, if you like. Just like Gurdjieff said, absolutely real. <laughs> but you know, like many things, um, when I speak to people, you know, they speak to me in the ordinary way. They watch the BBC, they've been to the educational system. Whereas I, every day, for hours, and going back almost two decades now, I experience things that are completely unknown to the BBC, to Sky TV, to your educational system. And I experience them all day long, I practice them, a very strange situation. But then again, you know, if you're educated and in English school, you will experience things that people don't experience if they're born in a poor part of the world. So there are many people in the world, many cards in the pack, and you can shuffle them, but they're actually very different. Anyway, my insight was this, um, as I breathe in, and then as I breathe out, when I breathe out, the breath falls away, it falls down, and when I breathe in, it rises up, it rises up and out. It's coming up from the void. And when I breathe out, it flows downwards, downwards, through my belly, through the base, and out. And again I breathe in, and this breath is rising from the void, the unseen ground of existence. It rises through my structure. And then it falls once again, back down. And this, this is how existence functions. The energy rises up from the void and it enters into creation through me. And then it falls back down. Why does it do this? What is the meaning of this? Well, that source is exploring in this domain, the domain that we call creation, that place that we live in. And that source, the intelligence of that source, is investigating this whole place we live in through the breath. The breath is like a kind of intelligence, but of a very fundamental kind. And that intelligence flows through me, up through my body, through my organs. It fills all those channels and vessels and bodies. And then I touch this world with my hands and with my feelings. I see this world, I reflect upon this world, and then I breathe out, and everything that has happened is returned to the source. I am like a tree, and the energy flows through me, and through my body, through my touch, I touch this world. 
I am that tree through which the Absolute tastes, feels this whole plane of existence. And then it falls and everything that I have gained, every experience, every note, every taste, every drop of rain is returned into the Absolute. And the Absolute breathes. It breathes because it wants to touch this world. It wants to know this world. The energy rises through me and the Gurdjieff talks of the ray of creation. I can be a very simple vessel and if I am a simple vessel then the energy flows through me in a simple way and it returns in a simple way and one day I will be finished and gone and there will be nothing left. But if I am a, a vessel that has developed some of its own sense of itself, then things are forming for me, for this individual. And then when the final breath leaves, something will be left. And eventually that certain thing can become what we call immortal. If I am developing myself, then my interaction with existence can be of a higher quality and the absolute tastes feels and thinks something that it cannot easily find through a tree that it cannot easily find not so easy to be a creature in creation with so many difficulties that we have just to live and then to do that additional work of the path the, the insight I had was more about um, those characters that are called the many eyes you see as the energy rises up, uh, human beings in general are, are formed about halfway up, about at the solar plexus level. That is formed. As a species, it has become solidified over a long time. They have tied up those stops on the ray the first five, the two stories, three and three. And now a lot of things can happen. Now a lot of changes can happen. Gurdjieff says that one man from another can be as different as man from mineral. They look the same when they walk down the street like cards in a pack but they are not the same inside because from the fifth you have a cycle and you have the ability that your work goes to you as the center of your own 
universe. But as the energy continues to rise past the solar plexus, it tries to understand what's happening upstairs. It's not easy to understand. It's not easy to evolve. How easy would it be for a donkey to look at a, a car service manual? And the donkey looking at it, be looking at you, doesn't understand. It is the same when the energy rises up through our eyes, through the upper story, it doesn't really understand. It, it tries to grab things. And it tries on the basis of what it knows. It knows the physical world. It knows how to fight. On the internet there's a lot of violence, psychic violence on Facebook. And the violence is taking the same form as any kind of battle in the field. Because the higher intelligence of the upper story is trying to find something, find to, what to do. And it is following the same pattern as it did from the lower stories. The physical world, the world of violence and struggle. It's trying to replicate its ideas from the lower story, but at the psychic world, in the higher mind, it's not finding it easy. And moreover, the many eyes and the characters are what happens when there are partial crystallizations. Some conflict, some trouble, some big event causes a character to form. It's like a piece of work. That person is challenged and in order to deal with that challenge it forms a character. There's sometimes by impersonation and sometimes by conflict or confrontation. And then these become the many eyes. Hundreds or thousands as Gurdjieff says. And then the upper part of the human being functions by the flow the sequential flow of these hundreds of thousands of characters, which are temporary, partial crystallizations. And they have learned something. They are trying to learn something. They are like a temporary camp on a treacherous slope, a slope that you don't know quite how to climb up. But you make a temporary camp and another temporary camp, and it's all pretty nasty. You could be thrown off any minute. It feels precarious. These are the many eyes. But one day, they have to understand to return downwards and bring the information down. Because they have learned something, and that learning has to be brought back down, and they have to surrender. and then their knowledge will contribute to the journey.